So this is a, uh, a happy day. There's bill signings that you're uh, okay with, and then there are bill signings that you're very happy with. And uh, so this is one I'm very happy about. Uh, this is, we'll be signing in a moment, amended substitute House Bill 168, which is uh, really a bold step forward uh, for Ohio, uh, for our state's health and economic well-being. To put this in context, this is the first amount of money that we are spending from the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, that act provides this year that we have received approximately $2.7 billion. Uh, the bill that I will sign in a moment uh, will spend $2.2 billion of that, uh, leaving approximately a half a billion yet to be spent. Uh, this money will come back again, 2.7 uh, in a year. So the money, the 5.4 million dollars under the billion dollars under this plan, uh, is put out in two separate tranches, and we have received we have received the first one. Um, again, 2.2. This bill addresses some of the most fundamental responsibilities that we share as public servants. Uh, number one, the health and welfare of our children. Uh, second, the economic strength of our state. Uh, today, we are well on our way to a stronger post-COVID future. Ohio is above the national average on economic indicators, nearly 96% on the way back, or back to normal, according to the economic research providers at Moody's Analytics, that is better than the national average. Uh, we're making a strong recovery uh, because Ohioans are tough. Our economy is diverse. Our economy, our people are resilient. And because we made critical decisions back at the start of the pandemic to cut state spending, freeze state hiring, and leave the rainy day fund untouched. Because of all of this, we're well positioned to invest the funding from this bill uh, for Ohio's future. Uh, I said when I was sworn in and in the first uh, state of the state uh, that we should be investing in Ohioans. We should be investing in the people of Ohio. When we talked about this money coming in from the federal government, uh, we said that this is one-time money that should be spent in a one-time fashion. The money that we are spending uh, does that. I want to talk a little bit about some of that. Uh, $84 million will go to pediatric behavioral health. $84 million to pediatric behavioral health. I, got, I got a, received a call from uh, Debbie Feldman, uh, Dayton Children's Hospital. Uh, one Sunday, and she says, I have an idea, and I would like to see if it's possible, uh, if you can talk with the General Assembly to see whether or not this money might be available. We started working with Nick Oshutka, who you're going to hear in a moment, and we also were working uh, with our friends and the different organizations in Appalachia. Uh, one of the things that we have seen during this pandemic uh, is an increase in children's mental health challenges. But this is really nothing new. Uh, this is something that we have seen for some time, and it's something that the state simply has to address. And so in partnership with children's hospitals, in partnership with uh, the leadership in the Appalachian part of the state of Ohio, uh, and with the great work of this General Assembly, uh, this money is being provided today. We also have uh, water and sewer infrastructure. Uh, one quarter of a billion dollars, one quarter of a billion dollars, $250 million. Um, this is a significant amount of money, but we have a huge, huge problem. Uh, Fran and I have traveled around the state, Lieutenant Governor has traveled around the state, and I can't tell you how often we meet with some community where they tell us we've got 70 people out on this road. Uh, they have to truck in their water every day. Uh, we've got sewage systems that are failing, and we don't have the money to deal with that. So this quarter of a billion dollars is going to get us started. 
uh, and our goal will be to get this money out as quickly as we can. Some projects are almost ready to go. Some projects have to be planned. Some projects, uh, you know, are in different stages. So uh, our goal will be to able to get this money out as quickly as we can. Uh, some projects are more ready and more ripe uh, than other, other projects. Uh, this is something that the uh, Ohio EPA has kept track of because we know people who have applied in the past where there simply has not been money. And so we, we have a list, but we are also open uh, as we go through this to hear from legislators, to hear from community leaders if they've got a particular project. We're not, there's no defined list, uh, and other, others can get on, on this list. So this is the beginning of a major, major effort in Ohio uh, to deal with, with, this, with this challenge. Um, Lieutenant Governor Houston and I, uh, in our administration really appreciates the work of House Speaker Bob Cupp, Senate President Matt Huffman, uh, also House Bill 168 sponsors, Representative Mark Frazier, uh, and, who is here, and Mike Wojcik, uh, both, of, both of whom really did some uh, great, great work on this. We also want to thank the members of the Finance Committee uh, in, in both, both chambers. Let me now uh, turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor, and uh, then we'll hear from some other speakers. John. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, I'm going to focus just uh, mostly on, on two aspects of this plan. You know, this is, a, a lot of it is for pandemic-related expenses, and, and I know that um, the business community is well represented here today, big and small, and we talk with them throughout uh, the pandemic to you know, about how we're going to keep their employees safe, about how we're going to help small businesses uh, stay um, viable and successful, and how we were going to come out of this, how we were going to make sure that the Ohio economy flourished. And, and I want to focus a little bit on the unemployment insurance aspect of, of this. Uh, the unemployment insurance is essentially just that. It, you pay a premium uh, per employee that goes into a fund that's there for them in the case that they are laid off or the business shuts down uh, so that they have access to the benefits that will help them make ends meet until they can get a new job or transition their career. Traditionally, that's available for 26 weeks, but that was extended, obviously, during the pandemic. Um, almost immediately, we've never seen anything like this in the history of our nation where we had a flourishing low unemployment rate uh, one week, and within a couple weeks, we saw the unemployment rate jump to nearly 20%. It drained the reserve fund that was set aside to support the unemployment compensation system and built a deficit of nearly $1.5 billion, approximately $1.5 billion, and that had to be supported from a loan from the federal government to keep this afloat. But we have an obligation, or the employers of the state would have to bear the obligation of paying back that loan. To do that, it was going to take an increase in their unemployment taxes of 50%, 100%, and 150% in successive years. That would have been very, it would have been a very difficult burden on the employers and it would have hurt them. It would hurt their ability to recover. Uh, we know that right now, many small businesses still have not recovered from the pandemic. Many more of them are having a difficult time hiring people. Uh, and many of them are paying increased wages, uh, which is good for the employee. Uh, and that would have, all of this recovery will be, would have been much harder if they would have had to bur bear the burden of an additional tax on literally hiring people. And with this passage of this bill and when the governor signs it, uh, that burden will go away. And it will help uh, fuel Ohio's recovery. Um, it will help Ohio employees. It will touch every community and every business in the state. And the gov well, the governor, he, he talked about the water and sewer piece, and, and he's absolutely right. There isn't, there isn't a trip that we take, particularly to communities that 
um, are not flourishing, where they don't talk about infrastructure issues as an impediment for the recovery. And as it relates to water and sewer, that both has an economic impact, it has a health, well-being, and quality of life impact. And um, I know that this was something that was high on the governor's list of things that he wanted to uh, achieve, and I thank the legislators and, uh, for supporting his vision on that because it's, it's going to help a lot of people that otherwise would not be able to get access to the infrastructure, the water and sewer infrastructure that they need to, to develop um, their communities and to, to make people's lives, to improve the quality of people's lives. So uh, thanks, thanks to all who were part of that. And uh, uh, this is truly a, a great day because we're, we're investing in things that are gonna help people, they're gonna pay off in the long run, and they're gonna be sustainable. Uh, and we, th we are, um, Ohio's making a big step forward on all of these fronts with the signing of this bill today. Governor? Thank you, Evan. Thank you very much. Uh, in a moment, I want to introduce uh, Nick Lashetka, uh, representing all the children's hospitals in the state of Ohio. Uh, the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services uh, will administer uh, this money, uh, $84 million. Uh, the investment, uh, as I mentioned, will really expand access to behavioral health services to communities across the state of Ohio. It's a key priority, uh, remains a key priority of our administration uh, as we work uh, to transform children's behavioral health and increase access and quality of care across all regions, all regions of the state of Ohio. Nick. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good morning, everybody. Nicholas Shutka, President of the Ohio Children's Hospital Association. As you pointed out, Governor, uh, there was already a pediatric behavioral health crisis prior to the pandemic, which has only been exasperated. As we look at our service lines throughout the last 20 months, um, everything was going to, in a, into a reduced state with the exception, notably, of telehealth and behavioral health, both inpatient and outpatient. And uh, we all do what Debbie Feldman says. Uh, so when we were sitting together uh, as a board and working together on what would be a comprehensive proposal we could bring back to the governor and the General Assembly, we shared with them that one in five children have a mental health condition today, uh, and yet less than half of them are able to get the care they, that they need because of access problems, workforce shortages, uh, and this bill by signing today is going to provide a huge investment uh, in both the inpatient and outpatient centers and from an infrastructure and capital standpoint to make sure that for those families and children in crisis, we're able to meet their needs. We're also eager, Governor, to work with you and your colleagues in the General Assembly to make sure that those facilities have appropriate workforce. We're also working on other elements of access. And I think it's really important to mention that this General Assembly has always recognized, as you have, Governor, the need for prevention so that we can get out in front of those kids that are in the younger age cohort so that hopefully we can head off any condition that might require a hospitalization. So, you know, our colleagues around the country often say, how is it that you have such a great supportive state? And uh, we know that uh, the men and women of this General Assembly and the men and women of, of your cabinet and your leadership um, understand the importance of investing in kids and we're grateful for your work on this bill. Thank you. Nick, Nick thank you very much. The Lieutenant Governor talked about the quarter of a billion dollars for water and sewer. I would just add that uh, through our Department of Development, we will work, uh, as I indicated, with local governments, with local government entities to identify and then invest in the most critical infrastructure needs. Improving water and sewer infrastructure will bring more investment into the community, attract business, improve the quality of life. Uh, obviously, it improves the quality of life, but it also is necessary uh, if these communities are going to grow. So not only are we talking about uh, quality of life and health and welfare of people, but we're also talking about the economic by, uh, ability of that community to, to move forward. Uh, let me go to the third uh, amount of money that's being spent. An additional $422 million will go to more than 2,000 local governments. So this is the money that goes out uh, to the local governments in Ohio uh, that have yet to receive direct funding from the federal government to help support recovery after the pandemic. Uh, the money will help our cities, villages, and townships uh, in Ohio meet the unique needs of their citizens. Uh, John also talked about the loan repayment. Again, something we needed to get, frankly, off our back. We needed to get off the backs of our businessmen and women. Um, it was looming. 
Uh, it was something uh, that at some point would have to be start being paid back uh, in starts accruing interest in in September. Uh, so t the clock is ticking on that, uh, and then after, sometime after January, that money would have to be assessed to the local businesses. And so we needed to get that taken care of, and we thank the General Assembly uh, for their action in regard to this. Pat Tiberi, President of the Ohio Business Roundtable, is here to talk more about the importance of paying off this loan. Pat. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thank you as well to the legislators and the legislative leadership for getting House Bill 168 across the finish line uh, for your signature today, Governor. It has been um, surreal since last March uh, what, what, what we all have been through, and you certainly can never prepare for what uh, what we went through, whether you're a member of Congress or whether you're a governor uh, or whether you're a business owner, whether you're an employee. And I'll tell you that the, the funds that the governor is, is providing today are exactly um, what this was designed to do. We saw the economy go off a cliff. We saw millions of people across this country lose their jobs. We saw states like Ohio, but not just Ohio, have a flood of unemployment claims filed. And the Lieutenant Governor said it best, and I won't repeat what he said as he walked through uh, what happened and why this is so important to do today. I want to add one thing to what the Lieutenant Governor didn't say, though, and that is from the very beginning of this process on behalf of the Ohio Business Roundtable, when I say process, <laughs> the pandemic, uh, as well as the NFIB, the Ohio Manufacturers, the Chamber, the Farm Bureau, and the retail merchants who are here today we couldn't have asked for a governor, a lieutenant governor, and legislative leadership that worked with us, listened to us, listened to our members, worked with our members from the very first day to protect our employees, to protect businesses. And as the lieutenant governor said, today we have a very different story. Uh, no matter what line of work you are in, you can't find people in your business. It, it is incredibly hard today. The burden that you are lifting today off the shoulders of employers that would have begun in September with, with those higher payments um, is a huge help to employers who are, who are trying to uh, keep their doors open with more employees, uh, whether it's Cedar Point paying $20 an hour, the, the Lieutenant Governor talks about that quite a bit, uh, but it's, it's in every line of work. And so this, on behalf of the business community, Governor, uh, it, it may not be sexy, it may not be worthy of a big headline that people understand, but it's meaningful to small, medium, and large employers across the state that this burden is being lifted in a judicious way, by the way, with these one-time dollars, because this is a one-time plug in a hole. And we look forward to working with you and your administration and the legislators here today to fix that unemployment system. Thank you, Governor. Pat, thank you very much. You're absolutely right. Uh, we have a structural problem that we, we simply have to get, get fixed, and so that's the next thing that we, we need certainly to be working on. Uh, let me ask Senator Vern Sykes to come up. He's played a major role in getting us uh, to this point today. Vern, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you for asking me to say a few words today. I uh, just want to say first that you have provided some important leadership uh, through all this pandemic uh, activity uh, that's helped us not just survive but to thrive. And we certainly appreciate your leadership and this is another example of the things that you've been doing to keep us on the right track. Certainly appreciate it. Uh, and uh, this legislation is something we worked on, the legislators in a bipartisan uh, a, a man fashion. Uh, we worked together to promote the best interests of the people of this state and make, as the governor has indicated, an investment in the people of Ohio, uh, particularly the unemployment where we're taking federal dollars, rescue dollars, to pay off federal debt. That seemed to be very appropriate to do that uh, and very prudent to do that. Uh, the assistance to local governments, uh, uh, to the children of the state in a bipartisan way, and I just wanted so again, thank the governor for his leadership and the spons joint sponsors of this legislation for bringing this and providing the stewardship 
of uh, making sure this got through the legislature. Thank you. Another real leader in regard uh, to this bill is Representative Mark Frazier, and I'm going to ask him to come up, and we appreciate his great work as well. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, it was a late night last night for the budget, so <laughs> I'm going to keep it brief, but uh, this is a real opportunity for the state of Ohio, and we see this one-time money that has been given to the federal government and a look at our priorities for what we need to do in the state of Ohio. And when we see the, the $1.47 billion of unemployment debt that we've accrued, the September deadline for accruing interest, the January negative balance that needs to be paid off as well, this is a real opportunity to look at how we invest these dollars and look at our communities as well. And when we see the $250 million that are tied to water, wastewater, infrastructure improvements with water, um, there's a real opportunity to invest in our rural communities or communities that otherwise wouldn't have access to dollars in order to do these projects. So this is a first step in the right direction. We have another $2.68 billion that will be coming next year as well for us to prioritize and look at the best way to invest in Ohio as well. But I'm very humbled by the, by the Speaker Cup allowing me to be on this bill, the Senate finance, the House finance for ushering it through, as well as you, Governor, for prioritizing it and making making something very good come out of these dollars that were get, get, been given from the federal government. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for the business community for your support as well as we continue through the Unemployment Council uh, that we have a meeting today to work on these issues. But. Um, I, I, I'm just very humbled for being here and, and representing my people and representing the chamber, and uh, I, I really appreciate uh, what the House, the Senate, and the administration has done to, to move Ohio forward. Thank you. Before I sign the bill, I also want to acknowledge several other people who are here. Ryan Augsburg, Ohio Manufacturers Association, uh, Roger Geiger, National Federation of Independent uh, Businesses, uh, Gordon Goff. Ohio Council of Retail Merchants, uh, as well as Steve Stivers, the Ohio Chamber of Commerce. So we thank them for their help, their support, and I think we're ready to sign the bill. Make sure we got enough pens here. I don't know. Come on in, everybody. Get in close. Come on. Eric's wide angle lens in that wide, so. All right, what's the date, guys? <laughs> Who knows the date? 29th. If there's something else you have to sign by tomorrow. <laughs> no one story per day. <laughs> one, one, one story per day. We don't want to get into that yet. <laughs> Somebody gets the dot. <laughs> there you That's go. not a bad thing in Ohio. That's a great thing in Ohio. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I'm telling you, we didn't have enough pens here. Yeah. You want a pat? <laughs> you want a pat? Thanks. You got the dot. Who we got over here? <laughs> got the, who, got, who, got, who got the dot? Thank Come you, on. Governor. All right, here we go. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. We got to do this right. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who didn't get one? Thanks, Governor. That's a real thank you. Yeah. That's great. You good? You good? Everybody good? Everybody good? That's great, Governor. Everybody good? All right, we're good. For the archives or whatever. There, so, go. there we go. Any questions? Governor, when do you intend Uh, no, uh, it's going to be, um, it, it's a very good budget. 
Uh, it's a budget that invests in our kids. It's a budget that invests in our future. And uh, we'll have more to say about the budget tomorrow. So. Any of you have an assignment done? Uh, do we have it yet? Probably don't even have it yet, do we? We do not. So we've got to wait to see when we get it. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly uh, beat the deadline. So it's so always good. As I've pointed out to some of my friends in the legislature, you know, after spending 20 years in Congress when there was rarely a budget that got done, uh, and we were in continuing resolutions almost all the time, this is, a, this is, this is great. So we appreciate it. Anybody else? Yeah, this is a happy day today, so uh, we're not going to we're not going to talk about unhappy things or anything else. So <laughs> we're, we're, we appreciate the great work of the legislature and that's this bill and the budget and you know. We'll, nah, just you know, you know, no. We don't want you to. We don't want you to have a lead on this. You know, you know, you know, we know, you know. So, Dewine refused to comment or something on that. You know. Happy day today. We're just happy. So. On this bill, can, can you explain the uh, the two hundred fifty million dollars for water sewer? Is that going to be through Ohio EPA, Keys to Ohio, or is that maybe development? How is that going to go out? Yeah, I mean, we're going to use. You're going to start looking at the list that the Ohio EPA has has on that. But look, this is going to be something we're going to consult with the with the General Assembly. Uh, we really are looking to, um, and you know. A quarter of a billion dollars is a lot of money, but once you start going around Ohio and dealing with these different projects, obviously, it's you know it's not going to uh, it'll go pretty it'll go pretty quickly. So we want to do a, a process, but frankly, as we move forward, uh, there's going to be other opportunities to put even additional money and with the consent of the state legislature, but additional money. And this is this is really quality of life, and this is investing in our future. And again, it's one-time money, and, and so we still have. We still have about $500 million for this year that we're going to we'll have discussions with the General Assembly and, and with others, uh, you know, about how that money should be spent. But we're off to a great, great start today. Yeah, I, I jokingly told my team yesterday that I want, we want to have the first uh, groundbreaking uh, uh, tomorrow, but uh, they didn't think I was very funny. Uh, so <laughs> we, uh, look, we're going to do it as, as quickly as we can. It, it, if you look at projects that we know need to be done uh, and that are likely to get funded, some of them are getting pretty close, but some of them have to be even designed. So no one will be more anxious to get this money out than I will. No one. And so we are going to push, push, push to get it out. But we have to be realistic that some of the more, uh, some of the projects that maybe are the more desirable uh, or some of the ones that really need to get done, you don't even have design work done yet. So we want to get that money out for the design work. And things always take longer than, than, they, than you want them to. But we're, I'm in a big hurry about it. So. Anybody else? Well, yeah, I'm not aware of that, but if there is, obviously, you know, we're going we're gonna to do these, you know, there's going to be two variables. One, one is, you know, the health, if there is a health risk, um, and, and two, of course, is how ready that project is. So, you know, we certainly will, you know, we'll look at that. Um, anybody else? Oh, I got a lot of ideas. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think look, in, in investing uh, in in our future, uh, investing in infrastructure, we have a, a whatever one thinks about the bill that was passed by Congress. And I'm not going to go into that at all, but this is money. This is one-time money that's coming to the state of Ohio, and we need to be good stewards of that money, which to me means that let's take care of infrastructure problems that we know we have and infrastructure problems that we know that need to be dealt with. Uh, for example, uh, you know, more and more people are using one of, one of the crown jewels of Ohio uh, that has been invested in by legislatures for decades and governors for decades is our state park system. 
state park system where people, you know, to go in, don't get charged, uh, where people just, we, we saw during the pandemic, uh, more and more people going into our state parks, which we love. Uh, people who discovered our state parks for the first time, or as some of them told me, I didn't know this state park was 20 miles from my house. I didn't even know about it. So, you know, that's a possible, certainly it would be a possibility. We've got some major infrastructure. The legislature has been very good in helping us to, to kind of work to try to get up to speed in regard to the infrastructure with our state parks, but we still have a ways to go. So that might be where, you know, again, in consultation with the legislature, uh, that's something we will certainly talk about. But there are other things out there uh, as well that are one-time expenditures that do have to do with quality of life. The budget that was just passed last night, and I'm going to defer your question until we talk about that budget whenever we do that press conference, uh, has very real and significant dollars in there to help local law enforcement. Uh, as you know, I'll just mention one. There's, there's, there's $10 million in that budget, for example, uh, which would give us a start, particularly smaller departments, on, on cameras. Um, there's other money in there, uh, a program that we started uh, in the previous budget um, to give local law enforcement help uh, in regard to um, being able to take phones, uh, which is a huge um, amount of evidence today that's gathered is gathered in phones, and yet sometimes in the smaller departments they just sit there because no one has the ability to, or time. To, to download them. So those are things we'll talk about that are in this budget that was just passed last night by the General Assembly, and we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow or whenever we do a press conference on it. Is some of the remaining federal dollars used for the rehab of the back of the program or You know, we still have money left from the other uh, bill. So I, I would think I'd have to check with our health department team, but uh, you know, additional funding uh, that would for uh, testing and other things would probably come out of that previous money. Uh, what was the first one? <laughs> so I want to make sure I understand. So the, 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 the question is about how I feel about something. <laughs> you have to understand, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that gets really nervous when, when they say, well, you know, you know, talking to you. What, what do you feel about that, really? You know, anyway, I'm happy about the broadband. Yes, thank you. Well, one, one, one's enough. One's enough. One's enough. One's enough. One's enough. Go on. Anyway else? Uh, we will be doing this again, uh, Lisa, tomorrow or the day after or sometime. One or the other. One or the other. <laughs> so we, we will see you all again, and we'll, uh, we'll have a second happy day, and we'll talk about the budget. So.